Hey, it's Heather here. I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. I hope you're doing well. I hope your family's health, you know, is like up to par and everything's going good. I hope you're enjoying yourself. I hope you're spending time with family, loved ones, you know, and all that good jazz, you know, and everything. Like, I just really wish the best for everybody and everything, even though I'm sitting here like struggling, <laughs> to say the least. Like just emotionally and everything else and then like not being able to even have like anything go right I feel like it's like every time I sit down to do a video here lately it's like my animals just like it's like a bombardment of noise like right now one of my dogs is scratching walking around the cat tried to sit beside me made me start sneezing before like I even or not sneezing but almost sneezing before I started you know shooting this video and stuff and it's just like I know that y'all love me like I know that my pets love me but it's like can y'all not want to spend time with me <laughs> you know <laughs> like when I want to do something that I want to do and then and then that's like okay you know am I being selfish when I want to do something that I want to do and then like I believe in God and in the Bible you know you're supposed to put your best foot forward you know and that's where a lot of people get off on the whole positivity bit train of things and stuff they're like they're like just because um you know you can train your mind to be positive, supposedly. That's, like, there's a lot of people that believe that that's bullshit. And they're like, you can't do that. You can't train your mind to think positively, you know, and this and that. And you can't do that with this and, like, the way life is and all kinds of stuff. And, da -da 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 -da, you know, and, like, you can't do it, you know. And they're just so adamant. You can't. You can't. And, like, I, literally 80% of the population of the world is probably like, you can't train your mind to be positive. Yeah, you can. I know you can. I've done it before. I did it when my kid was little, you know, like, I mean, yes, I had that to look forward to, you know, because I love children. I wanted to have a bunch of children, so I had a little baby, and my little baby was so adorable and so cute and all this and everything, so that helped, you know, but then, I mean, you know, even now, up until right before she was taken from me and stuff, she's still cute. She's still precious. She's still adorable. She's just got a mouth like a pistol on her, you know, like it is what it is, you know, but it's a hard thing to do to train your mind to be positive. And that's the thing is like, nobody wants to put in all that work and all that effort. Because they're like, it's not going to pay off. I heard it's not going to pay off. Because they've never done it. And they don't see the outcome of it. And they've never understood the outcome of it. I did. And it's like in the Bible, you know, it states you're supposed to put your best foot forward. You're supposed to come out looking immaculate, even though I don't right now. You know, if I was fully on the train of a positive mindset, you know, and everything, which I might eventually end up doing this, I would be sitting here looking like... Not, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm going to look like the best person on the face of the planet, but my hair would at least be pulled up in a way that, you know, is symmetrical and like, you know, looking decent and maybe some hair clips. Or I'd have my hair down, you know, and it'd be brushed and it'd be parted all pretty. And even though, yes, I brushed my teeth this morning, like I would have flossed too, you know. I would be sitting here like just, you know, and the dogs annoying me, I would probably honestly be sitting here in silence waiting for them to stop. Or I would just push through talking like I'm doing right now, but in a more positive way, not even mentioning the dogs, just pushing through it, going through it, not focusing on the negative, you know, and everything. But then it's hard, it's harder to do that the older that you are and the more life that you're living and stuff like that. And it's like... I was younger, you know, I had a kid, you know, when I was young and everything, and I was younger, and I was a teenager, and so, you know, teenagers don't have as many responsibilities as adults do, and so on and so forth and everything, and they don't have as many stressors, you know, and that's actually very fucking sad, because your teen years, when you're going to school, and the amount of shit that you go through as a teenager, usually here in America, like the teasing and the bullying and the all that and everything, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Like, 
I used to I used to hate being at home because it was a lot. But then when I got became a teenager, I hated not being at home because at home at least I knew I could shut the door and kind of hide. As long as the dogs were fed and watered and the yard was raked and pine cone free and pine needle free, you know, and I, I knew what I had to, to do there to be left the fuck alone is the best way to word it. And I remember, like, those years, like, right before I had my daughter and stuff, like, my dad, <laughs> he would try to come and bitch at me and be like, you need to, and I'd be like, I need to what? Because I done had everything done. Because I used to wake up at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning, go ahead and do shit before I go to school. That way, when I got home in the afternoon, I didn't have to see nobody. I didn't have to deal with nobody. I could go straight to my room. All my shit was done. All my chores was done. It was out of the way. Didn't have nothing to do. And I would literally just lay in the bed and think about things. Or I would take a really long bath, you know, like. And he got so mad that I did that. Oh, my God, did he. Infuriated because he comes from a negative place. Like, I swear to God, like, my kid come in and my kid have everything done. Like, granted, maybe one or two times when I think she does it, and I'd ask her, and she's even done that in her lifetime, you know, I'd be like, did you feed the dog, you know? Yes, I fed them. Ava, don't lie to me. That's my daughter's name, you know. Ava, don't lie to me. I did. And I'd walk in, and I'd see she fed them, and I'd be like, oh. and I, But I'd apologize, and I'd be like, oh, okay, you know, and I'd be like, damn it. You know, like. You get used to it being a no, and so I understand that, but he got mad, mad. Like, I'm talking rip door off hinges mad. <clears throat> I thought it was funny. Because uh, I don't know how many times he'd be like, you ain't, you ain't done this, you ain't done that, you ain't fed the dogs, you ain't done that. Like, I literally had to be berated, I guess you'd say, for like two hours after I'd go home from school. And it would just be me sitting there going, yes, I did. Yes, I did. If you don't believe me, walk down there and check the dog's pen. It's clean. Walk down there and check and see if they have food. Bet you ten they still do because I fed them this morning and they didn't eat it all. Walk down there and see if they have fresh water. See if their bowl is clean and there's no algae growing in it. And, you know, and this and that. Like, yes, everything is taken care of. Everything is done, you know. And he used to get so mad. Oh, so mad. That's one thing about the rat race of life to a degree. As long as you get your shit done, the rest of the time is yours. You know, so it's like how efficiently and how quickly can you get shit done and accomplished and done and over with. And, and that's the reason, like, at my jobs and stuff, when I do everything that, you know, is required of me to do, I'm just kind of chilling. You know, I'm just like, you know, but the thing is, is the, about a job is like they find more things for you to do. And my dad kind of did that too, whenever I was going through that phase and that's life for you, you know, but then idle hands are the devil's play toy. So that's the reason you're supposed to stay busy, supposedly, and all this and everything. You're supposed to put your best foot forward. You're supposed to act like nothing's bothering you. I seen this thing pop up in my YouTube feed for like a suggested video to watch and it was like, oh, I have a disability, but I'm pretending like I don't, you know, and I was just like, damn, you know, and it shows like a person in a wheelchair and then them pretending that they're not supposedly, I didn't watch the video, I don't know if that's really what the video is about or anything, holy shit, I'm fixing to start sneezing, but um, But anyways, dang on, I was just like, well, that sucks. And then I was like, well, they're doing what God says you're supposedly supposed to do. And then, like, sometimes I feel like that's the reason I am the way that I am on my YouTube and with my life and everything is I'm, like, trying to show people that even though, yes, the Bible says that, you know, you're supposed to pretend everything's okay and put on this... 
pretty facade and you're all broken and torn inside and shit like that. It's like that don't really, you know, and then like you watch, uh, like if you've ever watched uh, Joel Osteen or anybody like that, it's like God don't want you to be miserable. God wants you to be happy. You know, this and that and everything. And it's just, it's just all a mind fuck. It's like a big mind fuckery. <laughs> That's a great thing to say on Christmas Day, ain't it? But anyways, like, you can reach a point where you're moderately happy, I guess, you know? And it's it's a, it's a fake happy. I ain't gonna lie. It's a fake happy is what it is. And that's the reason you see people, because uh, for those two, three, four years or whatever, like, before I got pregnant and after I got pregnant, and even though my kid's dad was in prison and this and that and all kinds of shit went wrong and fighting with my parents and everything, <clears throat> I just acted like nothing bad existed and only good stuff existed. And so I was on this, it's, it's like being a dumbass. It's basically being a dumbass is what it is. It's like, oh, you know, unless it's really good or it's okay or it's moderately good, it doesn't exist. Oh, I was in a car wreck. I broke my leg. Well, I'm not going to tell anybody unless I absolutely have to. You're not going to put it up on Facebook and be like, I was in a car wreck and I broke my leg. You're not going to do that. No, you're just going to go on with your life, you know. If people see you out, then yeah, you'll tell them, you know, if they're like, what happened to your leg? You're like, oh, I broke it. Well, how'd you break it? I was in a car wreck. You know, but other than that, like, you just keep it to yourself. You keep your negative shit to yourself, you know? And even though it, it creates this illusion, you know, of everything being good and stuff, you really do feel better, though. Because imagine, like, if you don't put your negative shit out there, then nobody can ever judge your negative shit. So if you don't put out, I was in a car wreck and I broke my leg, a lot of negativity comes from negativity. Negativity brings negativity. So you put that out there, for instance, you know, and you're like, hey, I was in a car wreck and I broke my leg, you know, and then people are like, well, maybe you should learn to drive better. Well, maybe this and that. And then people just talk. Like, it just, it's like a spider web. Even if it's not talk that you can actually hear or see, you know, you're not there, but they do it behind your back. Like, it's just human nature to be sh shitty like that. And yet if you sit here and you put out positive stuff, you know, and you're just like, oh, you know, this is the best, you know, or, you know, like say because you wrecked your car, you get a new car. So, you know, say you don't mention on Facebook that she's in a car wreck. You don't mention you broke your leg. You don't mention anything. And then it's like, look at my new car, you know. And granted, you're still going to get negativity there. People are going to be like, you don't deserve a new car. How the fuck did you get a new car? You know, and everything. But there's going to be people that are like, oh, I like your car. Oh, that's a nice car, you know, and stuff like that. So you're still going to get some negative, I mean, some positivity out of it. But anyway, I just don't fucking know. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm living one day at a time, but at the same time, it's, it's a balancing act. All of it. All of it right now is a balancing act. It's like, oh, live for the present. Live in the day. Okay. If that's the case, I should cut this off and I should play with my dogs and wear them out and give them the best day ever. Because I love them. You know? I do. But that's the thing about family, if you will. If my life's mediocre and your family, your life better be mediocre too. And that's like something that I wrote on my Facebook a while back before I went through and I was like, <clears throat> you know, I'm going to get rid of a bunch of people off here and shit like that. Like, I need to find people that are legit. And then even at that, the three that stayed on or the four that stayed on to begin with, but the three that's on there now, I'm just like, one of them is older and I'm like, is she really there for me to be my friend or is she not, you know, and everything. And maybe she's like, I don't know, because, I mean, I, I, I just, I don't know. 
I mean, I'm cool with her. I have no problems with her, but I have no problems with a bunch of people that I kicked off my Facebook, I guess you could say. I don't have a problem with them. It's not that I have a problem with them. It's just that I want legit friends. And then the two, the other two, they got so many shit and ass things going on just like I do. And we all have trust issues. And it's like, for once in my life, I want to find somebody that doesn't have a trust issue. <laughs> and it's like, that's not going to exist, though. <laughs> you know? But it's like, please, please. <laughs> you know? Let me find somebody that don't have a trust issue. You know? That way I don't have to work so hard at it, you know? But, uh, it is what it is and everything. But maybe this older woman, maybe the reason she's kind of staying friends with me, it might be just to gossip. Or it might just be because she might actually value me, you know? Because, um... I used to work with her, and this customer bit her fucking head off one night, and I was out mopping the lobby. It took everything inside of me to not, like, say something to him. Like, in all honesty, in my mind, that's the thing, too, about a Leo. Like, if you've ever read on a Leo dealing with anger shit and everything, it's like, I've done killed you five times in my head while you're standing in here, you know, being mean to me. You know, and so that, 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 that's, that's the day, you know, that's the way I was with that customer. I was sitting there and I was like, you know, cause he was going off on her and she was, she was a manager at the time and stuff. And so she's above me. I'm just a crew member. I'm out mopping and he is like biting her head off and cussing her out. And I'm like, she could get mad at me if I say something to him and she could fire me and take the aggression out on me. So I'm not going to say nothing unless she gives me the cue and the cue is is like she's completely defeated you know and like you know nobody like she, she you know like the, just this you know and she didn't give it but it took everything inside of me like I was like I, I could I could hit him with this fucking mop I was like I could take this and shove it up his ass I was like I could run him out of this I mean I was just you know, in the back of my, I was just, oh God, I was so like vicious in my mind, you know, and I was just like, I could do this, I could do that, oh my God, I could do this, you know, and then I thought, or it'd just be funny if I just went and spilt the whole fucking mop water on, on his ass, you know, and like, whoopsie, I'm so sorry, you know, and shit like that, like, I was so mad at him, because he like come in and ordered a bunch of shit. And he ordered ice cream on top of all this fucking food. And so she forgot his ice cream cone or whatever, or ice cream or whatever. I don't know, some type of ice cream. That's all I remember, some type of ice cream. And, like, I mean, dude, you, you got, like, detailed fucking difficult made fucking food. And granted, we weren't extremely busy, but we were relatively busy, you know, And we just had, like, two huge family orders before you came in there. So we're done frazzled from having to take out, like, four fucking trays of shit, if you will, and everything. And it's just like, you know, because it's a family with, like, a bunch of kids or some shit. It's like, no, calm the fuck down, you know. Just remind us what we forgot, you know. And that's the thing, too, is, like, he did it like a setup. It was like a setup. It was like, is that everything? You know, he says to her. And he knows damn good and well it's not everything. But he's saying to her, is that everything? He's done being a shithead. He's done picked his target for the night, and he picked her. And it just it just broke my fucking heart, you know, and everything. Like, it made me mad. Oh, my God, it made me so mad. But, uh... I knew she would, because, I mean, hell, anybody would, the way he was screaming and everything after he left, you know, and stuff. She went in the office, and she cried, and I went in there and checked on her, you know, and I stopped mopping, and I went and worked up front until she come back out, but, uh, man, people are rude as fuck sometimes. Like, I swear to God, somebody didn't beat their ass good enough when they was a kid, like, legit. Or they beat it too much, you know? If my papa wouldn't have been alive for the first seven years of my life, I would probably be like, yeah, my dad beat my ass way, way too much. And even though he beat my ass too much to where I'm like insecure and shit like that, and so I'm kind of fucked up because of that, he, he kind of 
piddled, you know, in, in between a good amount, a decent amount, and then not. I'm not saying that I'm grateful that, you know, I got my ass beat when I was a kid, but I kind of am to a degree sometimes because I see people that I know. I mean, you just, you see them, you know them, you see their behaviors, and you're like, I bet you ain't never felt a belt or a cord or a paddle up against your ass. And it's like, ooh, I'll do it for you if you need to know what it feels like. I'll put your ass in line, you know, like, damn it. Just infuriates the fuck out of me. Oh, my God. As a matter of fact, he might have been the same guy, I wonder. Because there was a fight that broke out, or, well, it didn't break out, but there was almost a fight that broke out at my previous job. Like, this dude, like, was all Christian type person or whatever, and this other dude had his pants hanging so you could see his ass crack. And, like, Christian dude went fucking ballistic. I'm talking, like, all hell broke loose in his mind, like, you know, this guy needs to die because his ass crack's showing, like... Yeah, it's it's not the it's not the best thing in the world, but I've seen worse. I mean, I worked thirds, so <laughs> it's a fast food restaurant. People don't give a shit. It's like people out at Walmart. They don't give a shit. You know? But and I hate to say that. I wish that they did, you know, and everything. But then again, I'm I'm the one that has went into Walmart in my pajamas before. And I've went into Walmart with just shorts and a bikini top before when I was skinnier, you know, and I mean, but anyways, and I've even went in with bathing suit and t-shirt over it, and t-shirt's wet and stuck to my bathing suit, I got on flip-flops. But, um, I don't know. But these dudes about got into a fight. And, like, everybody's like, what's going on? You know, and shit. And I went out there. Because I can't, I don't know. Cause and effect. Anything big going on around me, near me, close to me, I gotta, I gotta know what the fuck the deal is. Because <laughs> everybody else was like, oh, you know, I didn't even know what was going on. Like, I heard a yelling, and I was just like, yeah, probably a kid, somebody yelling at their kid. And then somebody come up to me, and they're like, oh my god, do you hear these people out here? And I was like, no, what is it? I walked around the corner, and I mean, they're, they're in each other's face. And this one, you know, the, you know, he's like trying to buck up and whatever, and he's smaller than the other dude. The other dude's just like coming at him and shit. I just walked out there. I was like, it ain't worth it. I was like, Jesus Christ. I was like, I'm younger than y'all. Do I have to be like, it ain't worth it? Like, seriously, it ain't worth it. <laughs> like, like, you're seriously going to beat somebody's ass. And risk going to prison because their ass cracks hanging out. Like, I mean, calm down. Yes, it's it's not a respectable behavior. It's not a respectable way of doing things. But um, last I checked, you know, you weren't the moral ethic officer, you know. And there's a lot more shit that goes on and goes down and happens that shouldn't. That, you know, and it does. And so, I mean, it's fucked up. I know, I get it. I get it. I get that it's fucked up. But you can't. You can only go so far. But, um, anyway. Um... Uh. This life.
you just you've got to rewire your self to be the person that you want yourself to be. That's the biggest thing that I can kind of say to anybody. And that sounds fucked up and it is really hard and so on and so forth. That's another thing too. When I was happier, I had a diet that I stuck to. Um, I mainly only allowed myself to drink water. I would have a glass of sweet tea at night with my supper or Dr. Pepper or something like that. Um, mainly drunk water. Um, would eat like breakfast bars and like oatmeal and cream of wheat and grits mainly for breakfast. Sometimes would have eggs and bacon and toast and all that. Sometimes a bowl of cereal, but mainly stuck to the bars and oats and all that and everything. Um, lunchtime, half the time, probably didn't even eat lunch, to be honest. Stevie, get the fuck away from the door. Stevie! No! But, uh, anyways, <sighs> all I can say is I know life's hard, and I know it's hard to do, but it's just like, um, if you've ever watched any of the little speeches and all of this, you know, um, what is it, it's Will Smith, and it's somebody else that they're like, you know the difference between everybody, this person and that person, and how successful people become successful and all this, is that they stay focused, they stay driven, they, they're strict on themselves, they have a routine. They have, you know, a way that they do things. And even though everything inside of you, you know, might be kind of screaming against that because, you know, like, you're a soul, you're a spirit, you know. And so in that, you know, like, you're, you're what you're doing is you're putting your body into alignment. You're putting everything into alignment. People want to talk about putting your spirit and your soul and your you know, all that into alignment. But the thing about putting that into alignment is it's not going to be in alignment until you're dead. I hate to tell you. Because all the stuff that your spirit wants to do, you know, or your soul or whatever, you know, because your soul is kind of the fun love inside of you that just wants to go out there like a little kid. And that's the thing, too, about the Bible. You know, it's like, oh, be like children, you know, and this and that. That's what your soul wants to do. Your soul wants to go out here and just do shit for the hell of it, at the whim of it, whenever you feel like it, you know, just wee, you know, and whatever consequences come, come, and you'll take them when, you know, and you fly by the seat of your pants, if you will, and you just, you know, like you just do what you want to do. The body, though, is a prison. And you have to realize that, because if you're here in this world, then you are put into a body. And then the body is attached to the mind. And then the mind fucks with the spirit and the soul if you allow it to. And so you have to get all three of those things lined the fuck up, so that way you can have a decent life. Not an eternal life, not a spiritual, you know, everything's great life, but so you can have a decent life. Because the body is a prison for the soul. And until you escape that prison because of death, then the soul is never going to feel 100% free. And so this whole, like, just trying to feel 100% free soul and we, you know, and all this and everything, it's not going to happen. So instead of being like a spoilt, rotten kid and crossing your arms and getting mad and being like, well, I'll show you and I'll make it happen and, uh, you know, and all that and everything, you just need to give up. It's And it's not like give up, give up, you know, because you know, if you, if you have that knowledge, you know that when you die and your body's not here no more, then you're going to have, you know, the spirit that leaves, you know, and then your spirit can do what it needs to do. You know, it can... Ex and I, I understand that, like, there's this part of you that's like, 
well, let me let me morph my body if I can, you know, to a degree, so that way it matches my spirit and everything. And it's like, you know, baby doll. It's like, you know, it's like you you can't, and that sucks. And believe me, I fucking know. But unfortunately, we live in a world that is ruled by government. Government has rules that you have to follow. Rules that are going to eventually kill you. Rules that are going to stifle you out. Rules that will make you commit suicide because you're so miserable because your spirit's screaming to help all these people, do all this shit, you know, and just these good things and everything. But the spirit has a wildness to it that the body is supposed to be responsible for caging. And used to, it was, you know, in original form. It was like, oh, you know, it's going to cage certain things. You can't do certain things that you could if you were just a spirit and a soul, you know. And yeah, and that's good. But then it wasn't good enough, you know, because, like, people were still murdering people and raping people and all this and all these bad things, you know. And so... That's the reason the government and the laws and all this and everything. And, like, you know, it's like the same. The laws are in place to protect you and all that. Even though, I mean, hell, my kid got taken from me because of something that I said. You know how fucking ridiculous that is? I mean, yes, I did a physical action too, but the physical action was towards my own body, my own self. And it wasn't even like a self-mutilation thing. I would understand, like, if they're like, yeah, we're keeping her the fuck away because you cut your arm open in front of her and was like, look, you know, look at the blood. But, not, you know, like, it wasn't nothing like that, you know. And so I'm just like, you take my one and only kid from me. Because of something that I said. And then it's like, I hate you. Yeah. I hate you. You know, it's like, fuck. And so... It's like a fucking hamster wheel, you know, when can I win, you know, and everything. And, and the truth is, is like you, you can't to the degree that you're wanting to. So then you have to accept, you know, a certain type of win, you know. And that certain type of win is being positive even when things have kind of went to shit, you know. And it's a mediocre way of dealing with things and it sucks ass. But it doesn't have to, you know, like, it's, I mean, I hate to say it, but yeah, it's like brainwashing. It's like the government brainwashing you, you know, you've got to live your life this way, you know. And that's just like me, like, hell, I'm waking up and I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, okay, okay. My attorney says that supposedly I need to get two jobs. Okay, I don't even have one job right now. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, maybe I can get two jobs. Uh, yeah, I can get two jobs. Wait, I have a busted ankle and it's fucking up my leg and it's fucking up my, ah, uh, whatever. You know, and like I said, the government's going to end up killing your body any fucking way, you know. And then when your body, like, you know, that's the reason it's like with my kid, you know, I was like, we need to be like people in New Orleans. When people are born, we need to cry. And when people people die, we need to be like, fuck yeah, you know, like, they are in the spirit world now, woohoo, you know, like, they can do things, you know, that we couldn't in this form, you know, and I don't even know, oh, I don't even know, and then I watched somebody today, I ain't gonna call them out, because they're like a pretty decent YouTuber or whatever, but they, they put up a video today, and I caught like a bit and a part of it and they're like talking about society and the government and all this and everything and they're talking about how there's going to be a third world world uh war that's going to break out and it's going to be you know um not really a war like we think and all this and everything and all kinds of shit and just i don't know and i was just like that you know, I mean, in all honesty, right now, if they were to start 
a world war, I don't know how many of us would have the fight or flight mode in us to actually fight to stay alive, or how many of us would just turn a gun on ourselves and blow our brains out. Because we done fight a war every fucking day. Every single thing, living thing in existence is at war with itself constantly and internally. Unless they're sitting there dealing with it the government way, which is to take a pill and make it go away, you know, and hope that that pill works with your body chemistry to make it go away, or to self-medicate, or to drink. And I don't want to be a fucking alcoholic, so I'm sitting here at fucking war with myself, and like, oh, you know, you could, you could be on an antidepressant and not be at war with yourself. Where's the fucking fun in that, to a degree? I mean, that sounds fucked up even coming out of my own damn mouth, but I don't want to sit here and be some type of damn zombie that's just like, Ugh. I would rather at least, you know, be like I am, you know, be able to talk and, you know, and have ideas that, you know, just pop out of nowhere, and I'm like, where the fuck did that shit come from? I don't know, but okay, it sounds pretty good. Let's at least talk about it. Even if we never do anything about it, it's still just out there to talk about, you know? But, I don't know. This life, this world, these people. Like, and it's like I've said in previous videos, I ain't gonna be home until I'm dead and up in heaven with God. Like, home does not exist. And why the hell I... See, the government wants you to build that. Like, even right now, I'm living in an apartment that I created to be my home. My landlord told me to create it to be my home. Then, when I created it to be my home, she wanted to start, you know, kind of being a little bit more dictative in her behavior. And that's the way the government does. You know, that's, that's the way the government's been doing. Why do you think you got property taxes? Why do you think if you put a fucking building out on your goddamn property, a storage shed... They want to come out and fucking tax you and money for that shit. Like, it's all an illusion that they're building to control because they can't control the ultimate thing that they want to. They want to control everything. They want to be God. They can't be God, so they're going to try their best at being God. And what does God do? You know, God gave us limitations, you know? And when we go against those limitations, there are punishments. Adam and Eve, you know, here, I will create you. You are a soul and a spirit, but I am going to breathe life into your body and give you a body. So here's a body. So I'm going to tempt you, but not, you know, I'm going to act like it ain't me, you know, and I'm going to be like, hey, okay, here's this tree, right? Don't eat from it. It's all you got to do. All the rest of this is yours. All the beauty in the land. You know, everything's just magnificent. All the food you want. If you even have hunger at that point in time. You know, just yeah, greatness. Everything's just great and la la la. And it's like heaven, you know. And it's Eden. It's the Garden of Eden. Just don't eat from this. But then the serpent comes, you know. And devil and snake and all this and everything. Whatever you want to say. And it's like tempting, you know. It's like, you know... And it's the mind. And the God created the mind to a degree. To, sometimes I wonder. And maybe that's the reason people that are all on this intellectual kick and everything, that's the reason they seem more evil and stuff. Maybe the mind was not created by God, if you will. Now, that's some fucked up shit to think about. Because imagine, um, you know... Uh, I mean, seriously, like, imagine, like, you know, here's Satan, here's God, you know, and it's like, okay, it, it, basically, we're in a war, you know, we are, whether you want to realize that or not, and so here's God, and he's like, huh, you really think you can beat me, and Satan's like, yeah, I'm gonna raise a whole army against you, you know, and it's like, okay, and so imagine if they came to an agreement to make us living creatures, you know, and God's like, well, I'll give the souls, because I'm the one that's in control of the souls, even though, yeah, if the souls are bad, they can come to you. But I'll, I'll, I'll do this. I'll risk this just to see. So he risks our souls, 
you know, he puts our souls here, you know, because he's the only one that can do that. Satan cannot do that. And he's like, and, and I'll give them a body. I'll give them a body. Past that, you know, they can do whatever. And that's the reason it's like a fight inside of yourself. Your mind is fighting with your soul. And if your soul is good and your mind is evil, you get what I'm saying? And so, anyways, I don't know. I'm just shot the fuck out, I reckon. But I mean, seriously, think about it. Wouldn't that be some shit if your fucking mind, because if you think about it, it's your mind that plagues you. It's your mind that makes you worry. It's your mind that makes you think and all this. And that's another thing, too, that I've been watching recently is where they've been talking about Jackson, uh... The baby, I don't know, but anyways, like, the funding thing that they go through, the parents go through, is, like, Jackson Strong, even though his name, like, starts with a B or whatever, and supposedly he just has a brain stem and he don't have a brain and everything, and they're like, oh, he has no life and he can't this and that and everything, and, like, all I can say to people that want to bully those people, those parents... And people are like, oh, you know, the parents just stay at home and stay on vacation all the time and this and that. Okay, for starters, do you really think it's a vacation for those parents? Because, okay, take into account that you're Christians. You believe in God firmly, okay? And they really are. They're like Christian, Christian people. So you believe in God with all your being. So now they have this child born to them that, you know, is not, is disabled. And... Just like any other parent that ever has a child born that's disabled. And I know because, hell, my kids just got ADHD. And I'm like, what the fuck did I do wrong? And I'm not even a Christian. I'm spiritual. And then I sit there and I'm like, well, her dad did meth, you know. And then my family, my family lines are all fucked up and this and that. So they're sitting there. You can't tell me that these people don't have a certain amount of guilt. That they're not letting in and they're not letting y'all know about. Okay? They're not letting y'all know about it. This woman probably sits and cries. At least, I would say. At least. Once a week. And I'm talking like heartbreaking, crying. Because her baby boy is the way that he is. And the dad. You can't tell me he don't feel it. You can't tell me he don't cry. So y'all want to sit there and be like, oh, they're on vacation all the time, and all they do is they travel the world, and they, they get all this money, this extra money that they don't need. I, I've read the comments up under, and I'm just like, ooh, you know, to these people. Because it's like, if you're jealous, if you're envious of these people, then why don't you pray to God that when you have a child, that that's what your child ends up being like? Like, I cannot stand the hypocrisy and the stupidity of it all. So these people probably have immense guilt. They're like, what did we do wrong? Did we do something wrong? You know, did I drink when I was pregnant? Did he drink when I got pregnant? Did I smoke pot? Did she, you know, did, who's, you know, who does drugs? Did somebody do drugs? Is it our families? Are our families related? You know, and all this just mind games. And... I am so impressed that these people have not, like, flipped their shit, if you will. And that's the reason that they've hid away. They've hid away to a degree, for as far as I understand. They have hid the fuck away because the amount of negativity. You can't deal with it. You're done, you're done negative as you are. Like, you're done trying to fight your own inner battles, your own inner demons. And you cannot tell me that these people are not fighting their own inner demons because of the way that their child was born. Like, that's your child. If you've never had a child, take the thing, the one thing that you are most proud of, who the fucking hell piece of shit person that you are, and crumble it up, break it, and then try to remain proud of it. And while I'm not saying that, you know, that's exactly how they feel, I'm saying that's the best example that I can give you. So, for instance, you know, people that, that create games, you know, we'll, we'll get into that. People that create games, and I created this game, and this is my baby, and look at what a good job that I did. And then imagine, like, if you would have created it, 
and then you make the first copy of it, right? And when you make the first copy of it, it accidentally actually transfers all of it over. So you lose it on the original. And when it transfers it over, you start to play the game, and as soon as you start to play the first game, everything just goes haywire, and the disc, like, burns up or some shit, and shit like that. Like, how the fucking hell are you going to feel about that? You're going to be livid. You're going to be mad. You're going to be angry. You're going to be like, what did I do wrong? You know, I didn't do nothing wrong. You're going to retrace everything that you did. And you're going to feel like you have to start from scratch. And then you're going to debate whether to even do that or whether to just move on. And then that's a choice that you make. And that's the same thing, too, with her deciding to keep Jackson. Is, y'all are going to sit there, you know, and some of you gamers, if that were to happen to you, you'd be like, oh, well, I still got my whole notebook on how I did it. It's just going to take me, you know, six months or a year or three years to redo the whole entire game. But I, I know how the game is. And since I've done done it once, I'll know what I'm doing. That's the choice of, yes, I'm going to keep Jackson. You get what I'm saying? And then there's the people that are like, well, I guess it just wasn't meant to happen. Fuck that game. Well, you know, that, that game ain't going to work. That, well, shit, you know? And you just throw it away and you're like, I'll just make something similar to it. And that's the parents that get rid of their defective child, if you will. And yes, we'll call it defective, and I'm not meaning that in a way, but, you know... They'll, they'll get rid of, you know, the non-normal or whatever or the too hard work, you know, too much hard work. They'll get rid of it and they'll go and create another game. And parents that have, you know, a disabled child that do decide to get rid of their child or whatever, they'll go out and they'll have another child. To each their own. Everybody makes their decisions. Everybody lives with their decisions. Let these people live with their decision, but do not make it harder on them. Do you not realize how fucking stupid you're being in doing that to them? Don't do that to them. Life is done hard enough. Put yourself in their shoes. Oh, well, their life's easy because they set up a Jackson Strong Foundation and they get to go on vacation all the time and they don't even work anymore and they just go on vacation and they just travel and they just do this. Do you know how many times they probably cry? Do you know how guilty that they feel? Can you wrap your fucking piece-sized brain, you know, around that? And I'm saying that about you, and yet here's Jackson, and all he's got like is a brain stem. Apparently that boy's got more of a brain than some of you dumbasses out here fucking insulting these people and treating them like shit. It is their choice. It is that woman's choice. It is that man's choice. It is their choice to have their child and... Do what they want to. Like, damn, back the fuck off. Just seeing that. I mean, I've seen where people, the videos that I'm watching, and I'm like, I'm going to watch, I'm going to see what I can see about him, see how he's doing, you know, see if he ever does learn anything. Because I'm curious, you know, I, I'm curious. I ain't going to lie. I'm curious if he's ever going to learn to do anything. And you got these fuckers putting on here, uh, what is it, one thing where uh, somebody was like, oh, look at that, they put a fishing line on his wrist to make his wrist move. Even if they did do that, which I don't think they did, but I may be wrong, even if they did do that, that is to a degree like people that can't walk that they get the leg exercises and the therapy done, right? So if, if somebody takes and ties, you know, a fishing line to this boy's arm to make him move his arm, you know, in beat or in rhythm or to make it just like a regular fluid movement, you know, then so be it. As long as the, the string ain't cutting into his wrist, he ain't bleeding, it ain't causing him any harm, you know, and shit like that. I mean, that that's no worse than being put on some of these fucking machines that people do get put on that make them do things. That's like, um, for instance, you know, 
I don't know, this, this might just be the way that we do it or whatever, but whenever your babies get gas really bad, you know, you take their feet and you're like, I like to ride my bicycle, I like to ride my bike. And you make them bend their knees, you know, and like they're riding a bike and everything to help them pass the gas. Like, that. that's just something that I've always done with all the little kids I've ever been around when they're really gassy and complaining or crying and their tummies hurt, you know, or whatever. But, uh... Sorry, having a flashback about my kid. I used to do it with her for fun, too. And I do it, like, really fast, you know. I like to ride my bicycle. I like to ride my bike, you know. <laughs> and she just laugh. <laughs> oh, God. But, uh, anyways, like, it, people just need to back off and leave those people alone. Like, stop with the hate comments. You know, I'm going to be like fucking Thumper, you know. Like, you ain't got nothing nice to say. Don't say nothing at all. Like, shit. But far, shut the fuck up. Leave these people alone. <sighs> Just leave them the fuck alone. Back the fuck off. Oh my god. Shit like that just makes me mad. Makes me mad as fuck. Really does. Because, I mean, you know, that's like a, what was it? I was pushing the buggy in the store with my friend one day. And... This guy, like, what was it? I about hit his buggy or something, and he, like, acted like it was, like, a tragedy or something. Or I don't know what I did, or I about hit him, but I didn't. And I knew I wasn't going to, and I was going around him, but he just acted like like he literally thought I was going to hit him or some shit or something. And he, like, popped off at me and said something. He's like, well, excuse you, you know, or something like that. And it reminded me of the Grinch, you know, or whatever, just like grumpy old person, you know. And I was just going to go on, but it, I mean, it shook me, you know, a little. It made me kind of down, you know. Hey, well, fuck you too, you know. And I kept on going. And my friend was like, you know, your life must be pretty fucking miserable for that to cause you such, you know, like. And that's all I can say about people that want to sit there and just hate on people constantly. Your life must be pretty fucking miserable. For you to want to sit there and just hate constantly. And it's not even that your life really is that miserable. Because I guarantee you, I could talk to you. I could talk to you. And I could show you the positive. In your life. I guarantee you I could. I know how to see the positive in every fucking situation. I'm optimistic in that way. Even though I'm a pessimist and sitting and complaining about the shit. Because I'm just really fucking ah, angry and tired and bitter. You know, I guess you'd say. But at the same damn thing, or time, or whatever, it is what it is, you know. And it's just, it's whatever. You like my little... Thing. Can you read it? Today's mood. Cranky with a touch of psycho. Thought that was funny. But, uh, anyways, like, oh, life is difficult. People need to learn to, you know, go with the flow of things to a degree. They need to learn to relax, stop stressing out so much. Put their faith in God, if you will, you know, or put their faith in themselves and in their spirit, if you will, you know, and that's hard to do because the mind, you know, and the government and all these rules, and I mean, hell, my kid got taken away from me because of something I said. Like, do you know how fucked up that is? I see people out here that do drugs, you know, like, I mean, I don't see them see them, but I've heard stories I even, um, somebody's, uh, that I was working with, their, uh, what was it, their daughter's, um, sister through, like, the dad or whatever was a few months old and the baby died or was found dead on the side of the road or whatever. Like, and this was, like, around Halloween, I think, or something. And then another thing, too, is, like, a. This person also had somebody that was a friend of theirs that, like, drove off into a lake or I don't know, and they committed suicide or something. But, I mean, shit is happening around us whether you want to believe it or not, you know. And it always has been. And that's the thing, too, is, like, people want to sit and be ignorant and, 
you know, not know things, you know, and stuff like that. Not know that life is hard on everybody, you know. And that's the reason, like, I, I give I give forgiveness, like, uh, what was it? Somebody said to me, they're like, oh, you know, I wish you were my daughter. Somebody said that to me, and I was like, please don't say that. Like, that that's an insult to your kid, you know. And I'm not saying this with malice or any type of mean, you know, but this is my judgment, you know. And I'm, I'm not nobody to judge. So, I mean, hell, if you disagree with my judgment, then you can disagree with it. And it's not going to phase me, you know. But you don't have to come and scream at me for it, and I'm not screaming at you for it. But you, this person said to me, I wish you were my daughter. And I was like, please don't say that. And the thing is, is the reason they said that is because they admired or liked or something the person that they think I am or thought I am or something like that. And that's all cool and, like, you know, gravy and everything, you know. What is it I say, uh cool beans and collard greens you know that, that's all cool and shit and everything but it's like if I wouldn't have went through what I went through if I wouldn't have had the parents that I had I wouldn't be who I am so if you would have been my mom I wouldn't be this if you would have been my dad I wouldn't be this everything is cause and effect you know, and I am who I am because of what I've been through. And we all are who we are because of what we've been through. Some of us have been through more traumatic events. Some of us have been through more devastating events. Some of us have been through more peaceful lifestyles. And, you know, the primrose princess that, you know, gets fed off, you know. But then even at that, she's got her own little fucked up shit too. Because let's say her mom and dad never speak a word to her. And instead they just buy her things, you know, or buy him things or whatever. It's like, oh, you're crying. I don't know why, you know, and I'm not going to ask. And you're 13 and your first boyfriend or girlfriend broke up with you. But instead, I'm going to hand you a credit card and say, hop in the car with so-and-so and off you go. It's like, um, oh, what's the movie? Dinosaurs, I think. It's like a cartoon movie. And, like, it has these two characters, a boy and a girl. And the boy is poor and the girl's like, comes, comes from a rich family. And it's like, you know, her family's just constantly on the go and shit. And so she doesn't get to have, like, a relationship with them, you know, and stuff. Until, like, the end of the movie or whatever. But anyways, like, I don't know. <sighs> Life is difficult. It is for everybody. And while it's like, you know, that tough bit where it's like, people need to realize that and get over it, huh, you know. It's like, you can't, those people need to stop being like that. Like, you just need to stop being like that. That's like this one person that talks on the personalities a lot and everything that I've been watching and stuff. It's like, INFPs, because that's what I am. It's like, this is what you need to do. I'm giving you, you know, I'm, I'm going to be stern with you and this and that and everything. And while I appreciate that, you know, when I've watched the videos and I'm like, mm, you know, it's like uh, the beginning of the book that I have that's on the personalities that was written, you know, back in, I don't even fucking know when. And it says at the beginning of the book, it says, don't change me, is what it's saying. It's saying, don't change me. And then there's people that I've talk to about the personality stuff and that they believe that they can change you know their personality they believe that oh you know and some of them want to do it because it's like a science experiment to them it's like let's see if I can change my personality yeah you can act all fucking day I can go out here and I can read up on any personality that I want to I can study it I can dive into it you know and be like yes I'm gonna act so I can get ahead. So I can fit in. But at the end of the day, when you come home and you're laying in bed right before you go to sleep, guess what you are? You're that personality that you are. And I'm not all about putting in that effort to act like somebody else 24-7. I'm sorry. I ain't wearing the mask. I ain't doing the work. If I go to hell for it, I go to hell for it. But shit far, man. <sighs> but this is coming up on an hour long and so I'm going to end it here um, 
like I said, you know, uh, or I've said before, I just get on here and kind of talk about things that are on my mind and stuff like that. But I hope everybody is having a very happy holidays, Merry Christmas, whatever holiday you, you know, celebrate. And even if you see this at some other point in time and it's around another holiday, even if it's 4th of July or Easter or anything like that, you know, like I just, or it's your birthday, you know, happy birthday, you know, like I just... I really want people to be happy. I am such a hippie at heart. You know, uh, what was it? Uh, that that 70s show, they broke down the characters or whatever. <laughs> and it was like, you know, what character's this? And Leo, the pothead, you know, this the hippie is like an INFP like me. And I just thought that was fucking hilarious because like, I've been referred to as like kind of being a pothead because the way that I talk about things sometimes, even though I don't smoke pot, you know, and I can hang around people that do and get on the same conversations as them, you know, and stuff like that. But it's like, I don't, I'm just naturally high. I don't have to, you know, like, I don't have to smoke weed, <laughs> like, Oh, God. That's like one person that, oh, God, it made me so mad. When I first started my last job, like, I would come in and I would be, hey, how is everybody? Like, I always am. And what are you doing? <laughs> you know, like, I always am at every new job that I get. And I try to socialize and be nice and all this. And one day this person just turns around and they're like, because I was like, what's wrong? You know, and they just popped off. They spun around and they was like, well, not everybody can be happy like you. And, I mean, that just, <coughs> you know, I was like, well, damn, you know, like, shit, fire, calm the fuck down, you know. And I was just like, mm. and that made me really kind of spiral into a depressiveness, you know, that I didn't want to, you know, because like I said, it's like, <coughs> you know, it's like, what the fuck, you know. And... I was just like, damn, you know, what's wrong with her, you know? And it was a female, and I was just like, <laughs> not everybody can be as happy as me. How happy am I? Wait, am I happy? I'm not happy. Fuck. People think I'm happy? I need to stop smiling so much. I'm not happy. <laughs> you know? Like, that that's what went on in the back of my head, you know, and everything. I was like, I'm not happy. I don't... Happy? Where's happy? <laughs> you know, happy don't exist. <laughs> you know? Like, you know? But, uh, anyways, like... <sighs> You just go out and you try to put your best foot forward, you know, and everything. And I do wish people could be happy. I hope they are happy. I hope if you see this, you know, I hope you're staying happy. I hope you're finding what makes you happy. I hope you're fighting for what you believe in, standing up for what you believe in. Don't go around fucking trolling people, man. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. I mean, if you get a high out of it or a kick out of it because you're like sadistic or something... Find people that can tolerate it. Find people that you know that they have the intelligence to play the mind games of it all. Don't go out here and target people that don't have the um, intellectual side of that within them. You know, like, don't, don't do that to them. Don't fuck with them. You know, that's the reason, like, sometimes with me, like, people sometimes try to fuck me over and I'm just kind of sitting here like, hmm, 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 hmm. Oh, was that supposed to bother me? You know? Like, I'm not being a smart ass, but I've been through some shit, you know? And it's kind of what happens, you know, when you go through stuff, you know? That's how you get practice, you know? Like, hell, even, like, dealing with sex and everything, you know? Like, some people are like, oh, you know, if somebody's a virgin, it's like, oh, you know, they can't be good at sex, you know? And somebody that's experienced, oh, they're amazing at sex. How do you think they got amazing at sex, if you will? And then who wants to be, um, like, I mean, yeah, you know, like, yeah, I mean, I get it, but who wants to go out here and, like, fuck, like, 40 damn people so that way they can have a reputation of being amazing at sex? Like, wouldn't you rather be with one person and be amazing at sex with that one person? Like, I would. I don't know. Maybe I'm just weird like that, but <laughs> anyways... 
It's like a Jeff Foxworthy. Uh, oh, shit. Damn, I'm at 64 minutes. But he makes a joke, and he's like, you know, it's it's good having the same partner, you know, because he can please his wife or whatever. But anyways, I'm going to end this because this is 64. It's almost 65 minutes. Maybe it'll low. I wish everybody the best. I hope you're having a Merry Christmas. And, you know, if you need somebody to talk to, hit me up on my Facebook Messenger. I'll talk to you about anything. I don't give a shit. You know, and if you're depressed, suicidal, anxious or anything, kick that shit to the curb. Let it go. But I'll let you go, and I'll catch you in tomorrow's video.